Hi gang, Scott here. We're going to have a look at the black and white tool in Luminar AI and go beyond just the click the button and convert things to black and white because that's the easy part. Understand the sliders a little more so that you can better craft your black and white image. If you like videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And if you're thinking about adding Luminar AI to your toolkit, check the show notes. There's an offer code down there for you that will save you a little bit of money. No extra cost to you. Gives me a little support so I can keep doing videos like this. So let's have a look at the black and white tool in Luminar AI. Well, this scene here has a relatively muted color palette and it's a good option for a black and white. There is some good contrast in the scene. There's a very dark tree trunk. There's that you know, really bold granite in the background. So well, let's open up our black and white tool and first thing, convert to black and white. So this just sucks all the color out of the photo and you know the photo looks pretty flat, right? It is kind of okay, but not particularly interesting. Well, this is where these different sets of sliders come into play. We have two different sets. We have luminance and red, yellow, green, all different color channels. So we can raise and lower the brightness of individual color channels. And then we have saturation. And notice saturation is all zero, right? All the color's been removed. Now the saturation sliders is actually where I want you to start. And I'll use them to figure out, well, what different elements in my photo are affected by each of these different color channels? I don't want to really introduce color uh, back in. I want a black and white photo, but like I introduce red and, ah, okay, well, there's a lot of reds showing up in this foreground tree and some of the background, the grasses. Okay, that's mental note number one. Yellow, kind of the same, a little more toward the background in some of those background trees. But it's, this is kind of filling in some of the grasses that were not affected by the red, right? There's a kind of a horizontal band going through the grass, not affected by red. It is affected by yellow, okay. Green, I expect that to be our mid-ground. Yep, there's those evergreens, sure enough. Cyan, let's see what happens here. A little more in the tree line, so that's rounding out kind of the second tier of trees. Blue is our granite. All right, that's great. We actually have a, a very nice control for the granite. And then finally, magenta, uh, tiny hints of it in the tree trunk down toward the, the lower right of the frame. Now, armed with that information, mainly it was like red and yellow were our foreground tree, green and cyan were the midground trees, blue is the background granite. I can go over to luminance and start shaping this photo. Let's uh, first take the blues down, take the make those darker, and what happens? Let's crush it all the way down. Watch what's happening to the granite, right? We pull that all the way down, make that granite very, very dark. And we'll do something similar with the cyans and greens. We're basically saying to the background, this is the tones that were in the background, retreat, move back. Let's take the red in the opposite direction. We'll take red up. Watch, see red is affecting that tree and yellow is also rounding that out. The grasses are moving forward there. And then magenta, I'll actually darken that a little bit. That was on that tree trunk there. So just those changes really did shape the photo more. And from here, you can continue doing work. You know, let's do like a smart contrast, go visit the light tool, right? That's one of my favorites. Go back to the light tool, pop smart contrast a little bit. And I've got a separate video that will talk about the light tool uh, in two parts, actually. But for black and white, this is the way I like to approach them with Luminar is go ahead and convert to black and white, then visit the saturation sliders, figure out what elements in your photo are affected by the different color channels. And you know, as you're doing that, well, which ones do you want to darken? Which ones do you want to lighten? Return to the luminance portion of the tool, adjust the sliders accordingly. Hope you found this useful. Got questions? Go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.